back to the football show. Gareth Southgate coming up very shortly indeed. But it is nine years ago to the very day that uh, Jordan Henderson joined Liverpool for £20 million from Sunderland. Uh, Jamie, I want to get your thoughts, of course, first. What's he brought to Liverpool? Uh, what's he brought to Liverpool? Well, well when he initially came, he was it, it, it raised eyebrows in some ways because it was... Where's he going to play? Don't forget, he was a midfield player, central midfield player. We already had, you know, Steven Gerrard at the club. We bought Charlie Adam as well, who was part of that group who came with Jordan. So there was a lot of midfield players already at the club. I think it was actually more Damien, Keo uh, Damien Camoli who actually brought him in. Thought young English player, great energy, you know, football and ability. But he found it tough early on because he was actually played out of position, really. He was played right midfield a lot and he's a central midfield player. And... The thing I, I love about Jordan Henderson is, and, and to be honest, it's probably similar a little bit to my journey in, in some ways in that because at times I found it tough or people said I wasn't good enough. And at times people have said that to Jordan Henderson. But that just shows the character of who he is. And we can use words like great professional, great character. And these are just words. But what does it mean? It means the way he trains every day, the example he sets. People questioned why he was captain. I used to argue for Jordan all the time. And I'd say, I know the character and personality I'd want as a captain in my club. That's him. And who else could be captain after Steven Gerrard? And I'm just delighted. And and, and I think a lot of people like Jordan, they, they, have, they have something special about them where you never write these players off. And at different times in his Liverpool career, he thought, oh, someone's come in, he might be playing out, he always still plays. Even when Oxlade Chamberlain's come in, central midfield, Naby Keita's come in, big money signings, young, energetic, got lots of qualities, but Jordan Henderson still plays. And the last nine years at a, a club the size of Liverpool, I think is testament, not just to his ability, to his, to his personality and his character, because Gary knows as well as me, you, you, the two biggest clubs in the country, Liverpool and Manchester United, there's a lot of pressure to play for those clubs, a lot of, media intrusion, lots of fans around the world judging your performance, talking about your performance, and it's not easy. And a lot of players, great players, can't cope, I think, playing with that scrutiny. So that just shows, you know, what he's got there. And I'm just delighted right now that he, listen, in, in a couple of weeks at some stage, he's going to lift the Premier League title. He's lifted the, the Champions League as well, the, the World Club Cup, the Super Cup. At the end of his career, he's going to go down as one of those great Liverpool captains who's lifted plenty of trophies and... Also, what what he's done off the pitch, I think this season in in the in the spark of the you know with the pandemic, COVID nineteen, it almost feels like he's been a leader, and again showing those leadership qualities. And whether Player of the Year gets done this year or Football of the Year, I'm not quite sure. I actually thought Sadio Mane was Liverpool's best player uh, when when the season stopped, and I, I wouldn't change my view on that. But in terms of who's been the outstanding footballer of the year, and we know the footballer of the year brings is is about more than what you do on the pitch. I don't think there's a more outstanding candidate to pick up that uh, trophy if it's, it's given out, and hopefully it is this season, than uh, Jordan Henderson. Look, Jamie touched on it, Gary, you know, about the fact that he's going to potentially win his fifth major trophy of his career. Um, he's picked up the Champions League Super Cup, Club World Cup, or captain there. In terms of cups, only Hippier and Sunas lifted more. Uh, Stevie G lifted three. Where does he rank then for you in Liverpool's greatest captains? Where will he rank? Well, it's interesting. He probably... W I mean, I love him to bits, work with him with England, his professionalism and everything is unbelievable. But I don't think when Liverpool fans look back over a 50-year history, they'll probably still name him in their top two or three, even though he'll be one of the most successful. They'll probably still... They will still name Steven Gerrard as a better captain of Liverpool. Jamie as well, obviously, captain Liverpool and obviously the great captains of the 70s and 80s. What I would say is that J Jordan Henderson was belittled actually in his first few years at Liverpool not just by Liverpool fans but by fans outside of Liverpool as not being good enough you know you could never win a league with Jordan Henderson he was always compared with Steven Gerrard I felt unfairly that he was never going to become a great central midfield player however when I watched Jordan with England uh, and particularly when Steven was there as well and Steven was captain you could see there was an, in, an, an immense respect between Jordan and Steven there comes a point with that where it becomes almost there comes to a point whereby the older one's got to leave to let the younger one come through. 
And I have to say that when Stephen retired from England, he started to see Jordan grow a little bit. And I suspect that's what's happened at Liverpool. It happened in Manchester United dressing rooms over the years where, you know, Steve Bruce left, Brian Robson left, and Roy Keane then just emerged as this great captain. And I think what you'll see in this next two or three years is the emergence of a great captain when he becomes more successful. He just gains more confidence than he's already got. But I think the starting point of it was obviously learning from Steven Gerrard and Jamie Carragher and obviously the people he played with with England. But once those guys leave, it's when that's when they really start to step up. So I don't think we're seeing at this moment in time the best that Jordan Henderson can be as a leader. I actually think we're only seeing the very beginning of it because it's taken him years to come out of the shadow of those players that were at the club. He's now obviously becoming a successful captain. Once he's successful, he'll then go on to start to have real impact uh, and he'll have a real voice in that change room. He'll have a real voice in football. What this league will give him this year, what the Champions League will have given him last year is respect around Europe. It will have given him respect in his own dressing room, respect across the game that he can now speak on behalf of other captains at other clubs. He apparently set up the Players Together programme, set up the group WhatsApp, that's what leading people do, but he needs that confidence. So I think that he won't be just, I don't think yet, and Jamie will tell me more than I will, in the top three Liverpool captains. But I still think there's a few years left in him yet where he could then start to grow above the others because I do think he's still not anywhere near he can be as a leader. Yeah, Jamie, where does he get this resilience from that you talk from? Because, you know, as, as Gary said, he's had his critics in the past. How has he moved on from that, do you feel? Well, I think that builds resilience, really, when you're knocked down and you have that character. He's come from the North East, probably a working-class background. He's had tough times with his family as well. I know what his, his family have been through. Uh, I think it's well documented what his dad's been through health-wise as well and, and to come through that. And I, I always remember with Jordan that the, the way questions asked when he first came into the club, and I remember doing uh, some TV work with Roy Keane. And we were talking about Liverpool's situation at that time. And there was a lot of signings made. And I think Kenny had brought them in. And he was getting criticised for them in the club where. And, and actually, Damien Camoli, the sporting director, it cost him his job. He, he lost his job at the club on the back of signings. And Jordan was almost put into this group of, of players. And some of them didn't work out. And I always remember Roy Keane, who knew Jordan from Sunderland. He'd managed them. He said, don't write that lad off. He said, no, don't write him off. And that was just all about his personality. And his character really, and he was proven to be absolutely spot on. I think, I think, I think me and Gary, and I mentioned before about Jordan, similar in some ways. I think we've probably all been written off at times in our career. Maybe we were a bit younger. I think Gary mentions maybe Peter Smichael telling me he didn't think he was good enough at different times when he was coming through as a youngster. I read an interview with Marcus Babel. Uh, yesterday and he said I can't believe what the career Jamie Carragher had when I first saw him I thought oh thanks Marcus uh, <laughs> so you have, you have these uh, yeah, you, you, listen we're all at different levels when we come through I come through at Liverpool I was all, and Gary the same at Manchester United Jordan at Sunderland who were a Premier League club obviously got top talent to get to that level but sometimes you come across superstars at that, at that age and not everyone can be Wayne Rooney Stephen Gerrard Michael Owen Ryan Giggs everyone has a, a different journey and I think probably the three years have had similar in some ways where early on in our careers we've been questioned by certain people and you feel as if you're in a constant fight to prove yourself, really. And I think that's where that, that character and resilience sort of sort of come from. I would imagine his background and family, of course, as well. But certainly when you get knocked a lot as a, as a young player and people question your ability, it just builds something into you where you're constantly trying to prove people wrong. And, and Gary's right, maybe the journey hasn't finished and knowing Jordan's character, he's probably still thinking he's got to prove something to people, but that drives you on. Carrie, I mean, it's fair to say, it felt to me like when I was watching him in the early days at Liverpool, I mean, Liverpool's a, it's a tough crowd, you know, it's a, it's a tough area and it feels like you have to convince the locals that you're one of them. And it felt to me in the early days that they weren't sure that he was not just, not just, I don't think, good enough from a talent point of view, but actually that he was one of them. He maybe was a bit nice, a bit soft. Is, it was, is that how you felt in the early? That's how it felt from the outside looking in. He wasn't made of the stuff that Liverpool midfield players should be made of. Yeah, I know, I know where you come from because when he initially came in, he, he'd come in and obviously I'd seen a little bit of him for, for Sunderland, but not too much. And I just remember early on, he just sort of, he backed out of a couple of tackles early on at Anfield. And that, that right away, the crowd would be like, no, they're not having that type of thing and he, he was brought in as that type of player I think that's grown in Jordan a little bit as well he gets well, you know him as probably better than me working with him as, as a coach in a position as well in that 
he's very intense, Jordan, and you can see that on the pitch. He's the Liverpool captain or player who's actually having a go at players. He's always in the referee's face. He gets he, football means so much to him, really. And I think in that first season, he did an interview with me a few seasons ago when he spoke about uh, sorry about six months ago where he spoke about the reaction or the little bit of a bust up he had with Luis Suarez because he was finding it really tough to almost be accepted in some ways by certain players in the dressing room, whether whether he was good enough. And he, and he had a little bit of a bust up, not a major with Luis Suarez, a few words were exchanged in, in training. And I thought, yeah, oh, I like that. You know, because Luis Suarez was the best player at the time, him and Stevie Gerrard, and Luis was getting frustrated with, with, with a pass he gave him something. And for him to stand up as a young kid at 2021, 20, it just shows how much it meant to him and also how much he'd been going through where he was a bit like, oh, I don't care anymore. You know, I'm going to have a go with the best player in, in, in the club if he's having a pop back at me. And that was something evident early on because even when Brendan Rodgers came in, Jordan was almost put in the Europa League team. That's where I was. I was coming to the end of my career. And we all we both played together in that team. Really, both desperate to get in the first team. And that was, as I said, well documented again. Brendan Rodgers tried to move him on to Fulham. He was upset by that and he didn't just accept it, he fought back and that's where this character comes from and I just think if you have that personality, that character, something inside you, you get your rewards at the other end and his rewards are now being the first Liverpool captain to lift a league title in, in 30 years, Champions League winner and yes, when he first joined the club, no one would have believed that but as I said, never, never underestimate people with that sort of personality and character and, and resolve to uh, change people's opinions of them. And Gary, of course, he won England Player of the Year last year, ahead of Raheem Sterling and Harry Kane. Well deserved, you feel? Sorry, I didn't catch the last bit, Vicky. I just said he won England Player of the la <clears throat> of last year, um, ahead of Raheem Sterling and, and Harry Kane. Was that well deserved, you feel? Yeah, I think Jamie said it before. You, you, I think football, footballer of the year, player of the year now isn't just given for your contribution as a football player, it's your all-round contribution and the impact that you're having beyond. And I think that's where Jordan Henderson's at now. Uh, the things that he's doing outside of the game, uh, the influence he's having on not just his teammates, but on others and the standards that he's setting. Your footballers get a pretty rough ride in the media, in the front pages of the media, from a point of view of their lifestyles. We've seen it during this lockdown. Footballers have been held to higher levels of uh, st standards than, than politicians. Um, and they're young boys, basically, that are going to make mistakes. Jordan Henderson is exemplary. He's absolutely perfection from a point of view, how he goes about his life on the pitch and off the pitch. Now, I'd put, uh, you know, I'd put Harry Kane, Raheem Sterling, those lads, the great lads. I work with all of them. They're fantastic, really fantastic people and lads. Um, and Jordan really, I think, is a, a high standard to follow. So when you've got great players like Salah and Mane and Van Dijk, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold, and you've got someone who's experienced there. Now, I'd add James Milner at Liverpool to Jordan Henderson. When you see those two who have been at the club for quite a long time or have won trophies or have been around the game a long time doing what they're doing, it leaves the other players nowhere to go. And I think Jamie there telling that story about Luis Suarez, they are big moments that in your growth as a football player when you actually start to... what well, First of all, what you have to do is stand up to other players in the dressing room and then you have to start to lead them. And I think Jordan's just at that point now where he's getting comfortable in being a leader. And that's why he's been named uh, England Player of the Year. But I think there's more to come. I think you'll see a start, I think you'll see an even bigger influence in the next two or three years because he'll have to have a bigger influence. Once you're successful, the standards have to remain at that level. And that's where people like Jordan Henderson, James Milner really come into the fore when other players maybe just think they've arrived. They just step off the gas a little bit. It'll be those two that will be keeping them grounded.